Okay, another interesting example for Bernoulli's equation, a good application is, uh, for example, when you try to feed a house that's up a hill with a water line. So let's say we have the main water line down here, uh, where all the city folk live, and on top of the hill, somebody lives 100 meters above the rest of the town, and we have to provide water to that house. And so we need to have enough pressure inside this main line to drive the water up that high. Remember Bernoulli's equation that says P1, plus rho g y1 plus one half rho v1 squared, if this is point 0.1, must equal point 0.2 plus rho g h2, or there I keep interchanging h and y, let's just st stick with y, rho g y2 plus one half rho v2 squared. And uh, let's start out with having no velocity in the pipe. In other words, all the faucets are closed, there's no water being used, there's no velocity in the pipe. So in this case, for part A, we're gonna say V is equal to zero. And since this is such a big feeder pipe, we can assume that uh, at this point, there's no velocity in this pipe, so we're just gonna make that an assumption that uh, V here is approximately equal to zero, very little water being used. If we call this the reference height, so this is y equals zero, then we can also call this equal to zero, and now the equation becomes that the pressure one is equal to the pressure two plus rho g y two. And if the condition is that we need, that we want at least two atmospheres worth of pressure in the pipe as it reaches the house, what is the pressure, what does the pressure need to be down here to get the water up to the house? All right, let's plug in the numbers. So this is equal to two atmospheres plus the density of water, which is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, g, 9.8 meters per second squared, and then y is the height, that would be 100 meters. And so this is equal to two atmospheres, plus that would be 9,800 times 100, that would be 980,000 newtons per square meter, and of course, if you remember that one atmosphere is equal to 101,300 newtons per square meter, you can see that this is almost 10 atmospheres. All right, so now we can either express this in terms of atmospheres or we can express this in terms of newtons per square meter. So let's just convert it to atmospheres, it gives us smaller numbers. So we're going to take this number here, divided by 101,300 to convert to atmosphere. So, um, so we have 980,000 divided by 101,300 equals, and so it'd be 9.67, uh, yeah, 9.67 atmospheres. So this is two atmospheres plus 9.67 atmospheres. So if we combine that, that would be 11.67 atmospheres of pressure necessary to drive the water up there. All right. So let's say that's the situation. There's no water being used. Uh, the pressure up there is now two atmospheres. The pressure down here is 11.67 atmospheres. Let's say that this doesn't change but now the person in the house begins to use the water and water begins to flow through the pipe at one meter per second. What will that do to the pressure? Well, if the, the velocity increases, that means the pressure will decrease. And so let's find out the decrease of the pressure. And so the change in the pressure, the decrease in the pressure will be equal to one half times the density times the velocity squared. So for part B, we're going to plug in the one meter per second and see by how much the pressure will change when the water begins to flow. So the question is, as the person begins to use more and more water and the velocity keeps increasing, will the water still be able to reach the person? Will there be enough pressure down here to push the water up when the water is being used? All right, so let's plug that in. So this is one half times 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter times velocity, which is one meter per second, uh, and we have to square that, and so that would give us uh, 500 newtons per square meter. Now, 500 newtons per square meter is actually a very small amount compared to atmospheric pressure, so you can see that would not make a whole lot of difference. What about part C, where now we increase the velocity to five meters a second? A lot of faucets are being opened up, water is beginning to flow into the house. So we can say that the change in the pressure is equal to one half times the density times velocity squared. So in this case, that would be one half times 1,000 kilograms 
per cubic meter times the velocity 5 meters per second squared. So now we have 500 times 25 or hmm, that would be 12,500 newtons per square meter, 12,500 newtons per square meter. And again, that is still a reasonably small fraction of an atmosphere. So if you start out with two atmospheres where the pressure here, and now we have this much of a drop in the pressure, which is about 10, 12%. So at that point, you'd be at 1.8 or 1.9 atmospheres. So you're still good. You don't have to worry. The house is fine. You can use all the water you want and you should have enough pressure. So what I'm just trying to show here is that the, that the increase um, the decrease in the pressure caused by this term right here, which is now no longer zero. So if this goes up, then this has to come down. Pressure will come down by the amount calculated here. And that's how you do that.